singers tonight, all the groups, the choirs, everything has been phenomenal. Now we're fixing to have the best part. Bringing you the gospel according to Mark chapter 9. You would be so kind as to turn there with me. Mark chapter 9. I'd like to thank the good Lord for leading my friend, Brother Billy Cole, and using him so awesomely this morning not only to minister in the Holy Ghost, but to minister to my mind, to my inner man, to help me to know that I am doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Thank God for my friend, Brother Mitchell, who, again, was used of God to not only bless the people, but to bless me and help me, encourage me. Praise God. Praise God. Mark chapter 9 Beginning, please, with verse 17. One of the multitude answered and said, Master, I brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. Wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answered him and saith, O faithless generation. I'm going to be trying to be very, very short and brief tonight. I don't want to take advantage of you standing on your feet, but, but if I don't handle this now, I'll never get back to it. He said, I brought my kids to your disciples and they couldn't do the job. And I was amazed when I looked at the Lord's response. He didn't chew out the failure disciples. He chewed out the dead. I kind of thought that's what you think about that. They couldn't cast them out. The father blamed the church. And the head blamed the dead. We're living in a generation that likes to damn and condemn those of us who are trying to believe when it doesn't seem to come to pass. But the Lord put the monkey on the right back. Never did one time criticize or chew out or rebuke the fellows that tried. We got enough people sitting in the bleachers. Ain't but a couple of us in the arena. Them slobs that buy them two dollar tickets sure know how to tell us fighters how to punch. Well, so much for that. Oh faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. They brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said of a child, And oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Dear God, I'm going to be strong tonight. When Jesus saw the people come running together for the show, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. 
spirit cried and read him saw and came out of him and he was as one dead insomuch that many said he is dead Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose directing your attention again to verse 22 oft times have cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him but if thou canst do anything have compassion on us and help us and Jesus not for one minute would receive such a statement as that but on the heels of that verbiage Jesus said let's get it straight doc it ain't if i can it's if you can I'm going to preach for a little while tonight. My message is, there's no if with God. There's no if with God. Lord, bless the ministry of the Word. Help me do a good job in a little bit of time. In Jesus' name I pray. Heal the sick and loose the captive. Set at liberty them that are bruised. Give us, Lord, a responsive audience. Lord, we, we've been here a long time tonight. And, and, and I've been waiting all day to get to this pulpit and... And I know people are weary and tired and sweaty and all kinds of stuff, but I ask you to just somehow for the next little while do what you began with Billy Cole and continued with Brother Mitchell and 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 somehow culminate it now with my effort. Jesus name I pray. Everybody said amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Oh praise God. There is no if with God. If is a two-letter word that upon which so many tremendous things seem to hinge. It's sort of a conditional word. You know, if you do this, I'll do that. If you do this, I'll do that. And for many years I was taught and told that the promises of God are conditional, but I am believing that that is erroneous. The promises of God are all yea and amen. The fulfillment and performance of the promise is conditional. But the promise is already settled. Now, I, I really would like to have a response, but I'm going to be very kind. If you don't, it will not affect me. For truth is truth, whether I yell or talk. And it doesn't get any better if I get louder. But I would like on the heels of that to tell you, you ought to respond. You ought not sit there like a bunch of mannequins and play church. I think you are under a scriptural admonition of God to be reactive and responsive to the ministry of the Word of God. Faith is released through your mouth. You cannot sit there like a pump on a log. I think it insults God and insults God's preachers when you two can jump around for a banjo. And then the preacher goes to talk and you kind of change the oil in your car. I think God likes to change the oil in your soul. I think it pleases God when you start telling God's truth and God's people say, Yeah, I believe it. That's right. Oh, hallelujah. I believe it. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. I, I don't believe... I don't believe when Jesus Christ stood up on the boat that day to put that storm to sleep, I don't believe he broke forth to the front of that boat and just kind of looked out and did like some of you do. Not your way for Jesus. I don't see Jesus facing a storm going... Jesus released his faith by opening his mouth. For with mouth, confession is made unto salvation. 
I don't believe when that fellow was preaching with that guy sitting in Lystra, and he perceived, the Bible said, Paul perceived that he had faith to be healed. I'd like to know some of you great theologians, how did he perceive that? Was the guy sitting on the floor going... Or was while Paul preaching about the miracle power of God and the glory of grace that that guy was sitting there going, Hey, I believe that. Whoa, I like that. Yes, sir. I, I, I think that could work for me. And Paul picked up on it. He watched him react, turned around and said, Ah, the Lord Jesus makes you whole. And he got up. Because you cannot perceive faith that does not respond and does not react. You must open your mouth. You must get involved. You cannot sit quietly. We are talking about the King. We are talking about the Lord. He's got the problem. He's got the power. Open your mouth. We are told to make His praise glorious. Make His praise to be heard. All you dudes that don't like emotion, five seconds in hell, you'll see how quiet you are. Now, 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 now. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get there. We only say if with reference to God for four reasons. One, we are totally ignorant of God. Two, we are overwhelmed by a situation and filled with fear. Three, we are devastated by unbelief. Or four, and this is the one that always kicks us in the head, we don't know what the will of God is. Well, we got a few hundred people here tonight. Let me just go on record for you. It is the will of God for you to be well. And you that didn't say anything, you believe it because you go to the doctor. And if it's not the will of God for us to be well, we need to arrest nurses and arrest doctors and burn down hospitals because they're fighting what you said is the will of God. Oh boy. Tough times in Tennessee again. My Lord, 14 times in the gospel is recorded, Jesus healed all. You know what kind of just, just jerks my tail? You see idiots who will look in the scripture and find 168 times Jesus healed, the apostles healed, God's spirit healed, and they will find four people who didn't get healed and say, I'm standing with them. That's the same stupid philosophy that says, well, 75,000 people got the Holy Ghost and my aunt and my grandma Tilly, she didn't get it. I'm staying with grandma. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, there was a gentleman named Abraham Lincoln. He signed into law a thing called the Emancipation Proclamation. And for those of you that don't understand big words, the Emancipation Proclamation simply meant you cast it free. He signed into law a statement that took all the black people, all the Chinese, all the Indians, all the minor races who were being held slaves against their will, and he legally set them free. But I am here to tell you Legally and actually are not the same. And at Calvary, two wonderful things took place. We were set free to be healed, and we were set free to be saved. And it's time that we take 
actually to us. What has legally been given to us? His stripes were taken. His blood was shed. The victory of his sacrifice. He has justified our faith. Oh, God. Oh, God. Stick with me just a minute. Can you see the slave on the plantation? He's been there all his life. He's legally free. The only reason he stays on the plantation is he don't know. Listen to what I'm trying to tell you. Knowledge is power. You cannot release faith without knowledge. You can only release hope. What makes the doctor such a smart man? He knows more than you. Your Aunt Tilly's laying in the hospital. Everybody's eating their fingernails to the elbow. He walks in. Well, Doc, what do you say? What's this? Now he's as dumb as you. He says, Oh, we don't know. What, what, what do you mean you don't know? Watch what he's going to tell you. We're waiting for the lab report. Oh, you mean once you get that knowledge, that will give you power of prognosis and diagnosis and recovery. So the knowledge is what will set you free to take corrective action. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. We got the goosebumps. We got the music. We got the standards. We got the rules. We got the regulations. How about some knowledge? You know how I got the Holy Ghost? Somebody told me. I didn't know you could get the Holy Ghost. I used to be a Catholic. Then I was a Presbyterian. Then I was a Southern Baptist. I didn't know you could have the Holy Ghost. Then I came among you holy rollers, and you showed it to me. And what was legally mine actually became mine. Then I released my faith. It does not happen to us automatically. It comes by faith. Oh, stick with me just a second. So here's this guy, Bishop Kenny. Old Black Joe from Kokomo is on the plantation. He don't know he's been free. So here comes a guy walking up with a letter. And he says, hey, old Black Joe from Kokomo, I got me here a letter from El Presidente Lee. And old Uncle Abe said, as of such and such a date, you're free. Now, this bimbo's got two chances. He can do like some of us and go, I, I, I wasn't raised that way. Well, he can say, when he looks at the proclamation and sees the signature and whose name it is, is it really Abe Lincoln? He's the head knocker. He said all the slaves are free. Give me that piece of paper. I'm gone. It's time for some of us to walk off Hell's farm. It's time for some of us to get off the farm tonight. It's time for some of us to release our faith. To release our faith. There's been something given to us that is legally ours. Please be seated. Now please don't misread me. Don't misquote me. Don't misread me. Don't misconstrue me. I'm not, I'm not trying to be unkind. You have to understand something. I searched for God since I was a little boy in Brooklyn. I went to every religious movie there was. Now, I know you laugh about the movies, but, but I went. I stood four hours on Myrtle Avenue in Brooklyn to watch Charlton Heston in the Ten Commandments with Cecil B. DeMille and watched it. It was a four-hour film. I stayed through it twice. With tears running down my face as a 12 year old boy. I watched all the films they gave. Because I wanted to be a Christian. And all I found was fakers. All I found was, was pretentious people. All I found was people who read scripture and they said this is legally ours, but it never was actually operative in their life. This is a divine meeting, this camp meeting. God is trying to bring us to an apex 
of our apostolic faith so that what has actually been given to us legally can now be given to us experimentally. Oh my. Oh my. I'm here to tell you. You ready to read, Brother Anthony? Where is you? I'm going to tell you something. I don't mean to be offensive. I know it comes natural with me. But if you say tonight, if you can, you are an idiot. If I get finished with this in the next 30 minutes, and you have the audacity to walk out of here with your little stupid problem and say, if you can, you are a bimbo. We measure God by our own stupidity, simplicity, and failure. We need to change glasses. Now you got to understand something. This guy's got a demon-possessed kid. That kid's been raised in chain in their home and breaking the old man's heart. And he's gone to this little uh, embryo stage disciple and say, Hey, heard you pets can do tricks. We need a trick. Get the devil out of my kid. Come in there. In the name of Jesus, we command you. And giving him chiropractic adjustments and spitting all over him. And, and the devil just sitting inside that kid going, Nope. No, no. And it's so easy for us to damn and condemn somebody who has actually tried to do something for God and it didn't work. But if I'm reading this Bible right, when the guy brought the kid to Jesus, it was still Jesus' will to set him free. And if we can't get the job done for you in this camp meeting, you do have a higher court of appeal. Well, here I go. Our business is not with you, PC. It's not with the Baptist. It's not with Jehovah's Witnesses. Our business is with Jesus Christ. Our business is with Jesus Christ. He is the healer. He is the Savior. He is the Deliverer. He is the Baptizer with the Holy Ghost. He is the Lover of our souls. Don't write God off because the church isn't quite mature yet. Now just stay with me. Anthony, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm changing in the middle of the street. I want to go to Mark 9. i got to handle this while I'm here because I may not get back. I want Mark 9. If you don't mind. Verse 21. Let's, let's handle this first. And then I'll get to my sermon. 9 and what? 9 and 21. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since <laughs> this came unto him? Now listen. Jesus is God incarnate. He don't need to ask questions. When Jesus Christ asks a question, you need to find the real reason for the question. It is not obvious. You have to search for it. When he said, hey, mister, how long has this stuff been bugging your kid? That's right, he knew. But the crowd didn't know. And so he wants Dad to testify in the mic. How long? Now you hear, I'm fixing to come on like hot fire. He said, how long has it been? He said, of a child. But when I read that scripture, the Holy Ghost went, Shoom! Tell the people in Louisiana that it doesn't matter if they've been suffering from something since they were a little child. I can go back in their childhood and I can erase their fear and I can erase their injury and I can heal their scars. It does not matter if you have been this way since you were born. There is a king in this house who is able to take care of problems that were on you since you were a child. God 
क्या हो And oftentimes it has cast him into the fire, and into the water to destroy him. Stop. Point number two. Revelation. Jesus said, "Would you run that by me again?" He said, "The devil has taken the two most powerful forces in the world, water and fire, and tried to destroy him." And Jesus looked at that and said, "Hmm." I'll take those two forces, and I'll deliver the world. That's why we want to baptize in Jesus' name. That's why we baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. When the elements were created by Jesus, they got to obey Jesus. Whether they're material, metaphysical, or spiritual, He is the Creator. He is the Sustainer. He baptizes with the Holy Ghost and fire. What the devil cannot do, Jesus Christ can do. The devil was trying to use those two elements to destroy. God is life. He uses those elements to give life. For me, Reverend. But if thou canst do anything, Can you have compassion on us and help us. Stop. You can be seated for one second, Brother Anthony. Now I think that's a statement made out of ignorance, not out of unbelief. Out of ignorance. Can you imagine a person standing, looking at God incarnate, and saying, uh, if, if, "If you can do anything to help us." Everybody, close your eyes and say, "What?" Everybody, close your eyes and say, "You said what?" If I can do anything, I'm fixing to consider him tonight, Elder Dees. I'm fixing for us to look away from UPC and look unto Jesus Christ. We need a new vision of Jesus Christ tonight. We need a new look at Jesus Christ tonight. We need to get a picture of Him. <laughs> Consider with me for just one moment. Read for me, Reb. No, I want, I want you back in Isaiah. I'm driving him crazy. Well, while you go there, I'll preach a while. To whom then will you like to yeah. Listen to the Lord talking. Or shall be equal, saith the Holy One. Yeah. Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created these things, that bring us out their host by number. He calleth them all by name. Stop. But he said, hey, you want to know if I can take care of your little dumb junk? Take a look at the heavens. I know all the stars by name. Honey, did you hear me? They're innumerable to us. Yet God says, Hi, Charlie, Bill, Hurdle, and Bertha. He's got all names on them stars. You think he knows your name? You don't think he knows where you live? You don't think he knows the hell you're going through? You don't think the sorrow you're going through? You don't think he knows the pain you're carrying? You don't think he knows your limitations? He said, my God, get your eyes off this plane and look into that plane. And I know all of them. I made them. I bring them out. I call them by name. Stay with me now. I'm going to get to my message here in a minute. Read on. He calls them all by name, by the greatness of his might. By the greatness of his might. For that he is strong in power, and not one faileth. Not one of his things fails. Well, I'm going to nail it, boy. Hey, some of you cats, the devil beat your brains out, because sometimes you fail. Let me give you a little something for free. You may fail, but you ain't a failure. Now, that didn't do much to you. I'm going to try to show it to you again. That slime bucket has eaten my lunch because I've let him. And I've had thoughts that were not good. 
I've had reactions that were not godly. I've had mannerisms that could sure use some help. And he has turned around and said, You've got the Holy Ghost. You're a child of God, and you feel and think and act like that. Man, you just fail God. You must understand who is making this statement. He is the universe's greatest failure. Hear me now. This bomb is so ignorant. He failed God when there wasn't a devil. There wasn't a devil. He lived next to the throne of God and he couldn't make it. He couldn't make it without a devil. And he jumps on you and I once in a while when we fail because we're fighting the devil. You need to turn to him and say, you said what? You talking about me being a failure? Why, you slime bucket? You were that close to the throne of God. There wasn't, there wasn't any sin. There wasn't any temptation. There wasn't a devil. And you couldn't live to God. You couldn't make it to God. Don't call me a failure. I've got Calvary. I've got the blood. I've got the name of Jesus. I've got angels that fight for me. Don't call me a failure. If we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and His blood. And his blood, and his blood cleanses and forgives. Oh God. Oh God. Please, please be seated just a minute. I'm just a little bit tired of the slime bucket. I am. Beat me down like I'm some dirty dog. What you need is a revelation of your worth to God. You know, I hate your guts. You were made in His image. He's just a servant. You're a son. Servants always jealous of sons. That blows my mind. And I know it's not a big explosion, but it blows my mind to think that hell, the devil, Lucifer, the anointed cherub that covereth, Insurrected against God, God grabbed the creep and kicked him out of heaven like lightning. If I understand the book, one third of those angels went with him. The Bible said there's ten thousand times ten thousands of thousands. That's a hundred million. That means thirty-three plus million angels fell with him. Another writer says a company of angels innumerable. That means you can't compute. If we take the low number, thirty-three plus million angels fell. You talk about a huge civilization. And now God's got two naked people living in a garden playing with some fruit. Watch me now. And they eat the fruit. And God moves heaven and hell to save those two naked people and left 33 million angels go their way. I'm made in the image of God. I'm made in the image of God. I'm made in the image of God. I said I'm made in the image of God. Don't say if to me. Don't say if to me. It's if you can believe. If you can believe. Uh, pardon me, go ahead. You sit down a minute. Now I'm leaving the Bible and going to the land of imagination. I am. I am. Let me preach. Watch this. Can you see the devil going before the throne of God? Because he's always had access to the presence of God. And he comes and he says, Hey, I've been watching your boy Arnie. Man, that kid's got some problems. He gets a bad attitude. Says things he shouldn't say. Does things he shouldn't do. 
allows things in his life that are detrimental. I, 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 I got this record here. What you got? What, now you got this imagination of him. What you going to do with these indictments? And while he's holding the indictments, he hears. Do it. Do it. And every time it drips, it erases. How do you talk about erasing the Lord against taste? We got something better than Rosemary had. We got the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses from all unrighteousness. We got the blood of the Lamb of God that if we will confess our sins, He will cleanse us. Oh, please, please be seated just for a minute. Can you see him, Brother Teddy, when the devil standing there and says, Hey, how come Arnold does all these dumb things and you keep forgiving him? You went to Calvary, you shed your blood, you gave him promises, you gave him protection, you gave him provision, you gave him angels to battle for him and to help him, you gave him brethren to encourage him and strengthen him. And I committed one dumb sin, and you ain't never let me repent. I can see God in my imagination say, You ain't worth saving. Now, you didn't get what I just said. He looked at the... Honey, God can make a lot of choir directors, but it's sons that are hard to come by. You're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. He never one time tried to redeem Lucifer. And he has spent all this thing he created called time trying to get me in the boat so I can go through. And when I do dumb things and the attitude gets kind of wacko, instead of God letting me just trip on my way into hell, he puts Calvary as a roadblock. And if I circumvent Calvary, he dispatches angels, Brother Mitchell. Yes, he does. He dispatches angels who are ministering spirits to somehow prod me and turn me back. And if that doesn't work, his prayers are still effective. He prayed for me in John 17. His prayers have never lost their power. And if that doesn't work, he lays me on somebody's heart and gives them a burden for me in the middle of the day or in the evening. And they call my name out before God. And God comes to my rescue. Now, I can see we ain't going to finish. But I ain't done. I ain't leaving till Friday. Now, I want you to understand something. You gotta be ignorant to say to God, if you can. I'd like for you to just kinda, of, just take a look real quick and a few credits of Christ. He made the earth. That, that didn't do for you, it did for me. I mean, I don't understand God a lot. But all I know is in the beginning, God. And He spoke into nothingness and created matter. Matter is nothing but energy piled up in form. You know what energy is? It's what falls out of the mouth of God. Because He is life. You know how it comes out of His mouth? As sound and light. And God made the earth. Now I want you to get the picture. I'm talking about your dad. He made every river, every ocean, every mountain, every lake. He made roses and tulips and grass and trees. He made all animals, all vegetation. He made mankind. He made all living things. His word made every fish. 
all water life, all birds and fowls of the air. Then he made the sun and the moon and the stars and the planets and the constellations. Then he made seraphim and cherubim and the host of heaven. And he made the gold and the silver and the emeralds and the jewels and the oil that in the bowels of the earth and you're sitting here sucking your thumb over some dumb pain saying, if you can. The one that the psalmist said in 62 and 11, Power belongeth unto God. I still ain't reached some of you. I'm going to try again. My hands have made all things. I make rain. I make snow. I make hail, lightning, thunder, wind. I make the morning. I make the evening. If this don't turn your motor on, you're dead. He made this day. You've got a God that can make a day. Why don't you let him make your day? Why don't you release your faith? Why don't you believe that God can do it? Now I'm trying to get to my sermon. It's only about eight minutes long. Introduction's kind of long. Now watch this. He said, if thou canst do anything... And everybody said, what? Just made the earth, stars, constellations, wind, all principles that keep nature in balance, all biological laws. He keeps all of it by his word. If you woke up with some dumb scenario and say, if, if, if you could do anything, Honey, that still ain't got some of their motors purring yet. Doc, come on, try again. You guys all are scared of this devil? The slob ain't even got the keys to his own house. They bumped off our Lord Jesus Christ, but they couldn't keep him dead. And if they couldn't keep him dead, they ain't going to keep you dead. Ain't no grave going to hold this body down. When I hear the trumpet, I'm a coming up out of the ground. Because you didn't keep the founder, and you're not going to keep the truth. He said, I got the keys of death and of hell. What you afraid of? Oh, Lord. You need to understand some Pentecostal. Jesus Christ was not just raised from the dead. Lazarus was raised from the dead. The widow of Nain's son was raised from the dead. Jairus' child was raised from the dead. Jesus was not raised from the dead. The Bible said he was born from the dead. There is a difference. Put on your thinking cap. He was the firstborn. Why? That he might be the firstborn of many brethren. He is the first fruits of a total new civilization. You didn't hear me. He had to be born from the dead because we were dead in trespasses and sins and through the gift of regeneration, the Holy Ghost, we are born from the dead. That's why you need the gift of the Holy Ghost. So, now watch this. I'm trying to get as far as I can. Lord Jesus. Everybody ought to be saved by now. You have to pardon me if I, if I wax long. I'm, I, I ain't got no dad. My dad died lost. My mother died lost. I just buried my brother the other day. He died lost. I buried my other, my other brother in New York. He's, he's dead in sin. I ain't got no answer, uncles. I got nobody in the whole world that's my family that, that believes like this. And so when I get to talking about my dad, I mean, ain't nobody, Brother Barnes, had a dad like us. 
I'm talking about my spiritual father. I'm not being irreverent. I'm talking about Daddy Jesus. I mean the one that overcame the devil and the flesh and the world, who conquered death, hell, and the grave, who gave me the Holy Ghost, who brought me out of sin into his marvelous life, that I could show forth the praises of him who called me out of darkness. My friend, my chest is sticking out so far. I'm fixing to pop the buttons off my shirt. My dad is alive right now. He's got the whole world in his head. He's got the world in his head. He's got all power in heaven and earth. We do an insult to him when we say, if you can. My oh God, pardon me a minute, I'm just breathing deep. Read for me, if you would, Brother Anthony. Uh, we'll leave Isaiah. We ain't got time, I'm running out of time. Go back to Mark 9, would you please? Okay, would you read verse 22 again, please? And oftentimes it has come into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if thou can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Yeah. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe us. You see what Jesus just did? The guy's got a problem. Puts the monkey on Jesus' back. Jesus said... The power is not the problem. I said the power is not the problem. He said, I got the power. I got the will. I got the desire. Have you got the faith? And that's what we do. Well, if Brother Barnes will pray for me. If Brother Cole will pray for me. And I'm not being disrespectful. I admire you guys. You're your way out in the major leagues. I'm, I'm the bad boy for Babe Ruth around here. I know that. But my friend, if, 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 if we could just have a move of God, if we could just have a great camp meeting, if we could just this, if we could just that, well, if we could just have a good Sunday night service, Oh, man, if, if Brother Tinney would just preach a good sermon. Oh, if my pastor would just set the woods up. Oh, cut it out, you little hypocrite. Why don't you just say, if I'll worship, if I'll get my attitude straight, if I'll give, if I'll supply my repentance towards God's altar, if I will have a correct spirit towards the things of God, the power is not the problem. The power is not the problem. It's can you believe. One more minute or so. Jesus, help me. Thank you, Brother Billy. God used you to give me direction. Thank you, Brother Mitchell. God used you to confirm what he laid on my heart. Oh, God. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. There's no if with God. And stop blaming the church because it doesn't meet your expectations. I, I don't mean to ruin a good message, but if your preacher can't preach, why don't you pray for him? I don't really believe we got well, we got different type of preachers. I don't believe that. We have people that we like to hear better than others. Their mannerisms, their way they do things, or what they, but, but I'm going to tell you, every preacher that preaches Acts 2.38 is a great preacher. 
every preacher that preaches the truth is a great preacher. But if your preacher is kind of sloppy, if he's playing too much golf and doing a little bit too much fishing, or he's involved in a bunch of business deals or whatever, why don't you get a group in your church to pray? Because you ain't going to have no fire in the pew if you ain't got no fire in the pulpit. You cannot rise above your leadership. You cannot get more spiritual than your shepherd. Hey, preacher, you ought to be a preaching machine. You ought to eat, sleep, and drink, preacher. You ought to eat, sleep, and drink revival. You ought to love it. You ought to just love it. You ought to desire it. You ought to be on fire for God. Oh, oh excuse me for, for a little intermission there. Sorry. My God, man. I don't know how some of people stay saved sitting under them blase memorial patches. Stand up there and just... Let's have a pity march now. I have seen... Yeah! Yeah! You want your church excited? Why aren't you excited? You want your church spiritual? Why aren't you spiritual? You want your church to shout and talk in tongues and dance? Why don't you talk in tongues and dance and pray and fast and sacrifice and give? Why don't you give an example of what you want your people to do? Excuse me. Be seated, please. I don't want you to miss the sermon. Read on for me, Brother Anthony, please. Just another minute. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thy mine unbelief. Now, I don't know whether I've heard the voice of God, Reverend, but I'm going to speak this way. I think I have. I don't know. It felt like God, but it, it, it might just be me. But I felt like the Lord wanted me to drill this point home now and say, it is the dishonesty among my people that blockades the miraculous. We are perpetrating on our generation fraud. I admire this precious dad so much. He stands in the face of a dilemma. He's confused. He's got a failure from disciples in his, in his record book. He's still got a demon-possessed kid that's wallowing and spitting and slobbering, acting like an epileptic or something, acting like a crazy kid. His heart is breaking as a dad. And he stands in front of his answer. And you know how he got his miracle for his boy? He got honest. And he said, Lord Jesus, I'm not what I ought to be. There's things in me that I'm trying to believe. But there's unbelief in me. Hear what I'm telling you. Now, I'm telling you, I didn't know what I heard, but I said, I felt like it. Maybe it's just me. But the Lord said something to this guy that, that kind of moved my spine up and down. And then when this guy answered back, it moved it the other way. This guy did not ask for faith. He asked for Jesus to help the area of his life that was negative. Now hear what I'm trying to tell this movement. And I'm part of this movement. I'm staying with this movement. I love this movement. And I think that the only people who ought to deal with the movement is movement people. We're family. And the Lord is showing here, hey, I'm wanting to do a miracle. But my people are not handling the unbelief. But this man says, Lord, I believe. And watch his honesty. Help my unbelief. You 
read it right now, Brother Barnes. Right now. That's exactly right. I talk in tongues, I shout, I bang into walls, I run the aisles as much as anybody. But my greatest depth and my greatest blessings from God come when the Holy Spirit arrests me. He says, Jeffrey, got a little malfunction here in this area. You hear this? And I'm reaching for gifts and power and anointing and revelation and inspiration and direction. And the Holy Spirit says, nope, 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 nope. This area needs your immediate attention. And I fall on my face or I slobber and snot and boo-hoo and cry like I did on the way out here driving tonight. Saying, God, help the areas of my life that make me a liability to the body rather than an asset. I do not want to be pretentious. I do not want to be plastic. I do not want to be make-believe and a clone for Jesus. I've got to be genuine. And if I'm not believing, help thou my unbelief so that I can have the miraculous power of God operating in my life and flowing out to others. I'm sorry if I've belabored this point a little too long. Would you finish reading for me, Brother Anthony? And when Jesus saw the people came running together, yes. he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. Did you see what he just did? In one moment, he handled all the hell, the sorrow, and the trouble of the boy's past. He took care of the present, and he sealed them for the future. Enter no more into it. We can get a move of God if we will get honest right now that can take care of our past, that can bless the present, and can set us on the right direction for the future in this camp. Jesus Christ is calling this movement to a baptism of honesty and transparency. Oh, God. Finish reading for me, Doc. And the spirit cried. I like that. All that life of that boy, that spirit was making the boy cry. One moment with Jesus and now the spirit's cry. We don't want no more with you, Jesus. I'm going anywhere you send me, where you want me to go. The spirit cried, go ahead, and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead, in so much that many said, he is dead. I'm almost finished. Hear me. I'm not afraid of anybody. Hear me. Every time God tries to raise up people among us to function in the supernatural, when there's something that takes place, there's always a band of loudmouth critics who misread it. Jesus cast the devil out of them, and the guys that couldn't cast the devil out said, We killed him. You see, people who can't do things can talk. They said, He's dead. I like what Jesus said. No, he ain't. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm talking about there's no if with God. Oh, I'm so late. I'm sorry. My Lord. They said, if you'll come down from the cross, we'll believe. Jesus said, if you believe, signs will follow. Jesus said if the man had watched, he wouldn't have lost the burglarizing of his house. He said if the virgins had had the oil, they wouldn't have missed the wedding supper. What did he keep saying? The if ain't my problem, baby. If 
if thou be the Christ, give us a sign. Rich young rule says, I'd like to have eternal life and go to heaven. Jesus said, if you would be perfect. And when he put that two little word, if, on that church back, he said, too heavy. I want to try one more and I'm going to quit. I want to show you something. Cain has been out of shape at God because Abel's sacrifice has been accepted and Cain's hasn't. You ever wondered how they knew Abel's sacrifice was accepted and Cain's wasn't? If you'll study, and I'm not a scholar, but you look at me and tell I ain't no scholar. You can listen to me and tell I ain't no scholar. But I do think, and I do read, and the Scripture says that the Lord had respect Unto Abel's sacrifice. And you'll find it written in David's psalm where he cries out to God in prayer and says, O Lord, have respect unto Israel's offerings before thee. And I got to looking up that word, respect. And here's what it says. This is a Hebrew word that means turn to ashes. How did they know that Abel's sacrifice was accepted? Fire fell. And there's Cain's vegetables and his tomatoes and his scullions and peas and carrots and all he's got there. No fire. He's been out of shape with God. And you know what God says to him? What's the matter, Cain? You look a little down in the mouth here today. You got a little problem? What's, why is your countenance drop? What, what's the malfunction in your mind, boy? What, what's, your, what's your problem? Watch what God says. If thou doest well, wilt thou not be accepted? And he said, the offering's right over there. We've always used that scripture and said, well... Sin lieth at the door. You need to really read your Bible, folks, and preach the right thing. We've used that evangelistically and say, sin's lying at the door. Now, that's not what that means. The original Hebrew says, the sin offering is at the gate. What the Lord told him was this. Hey, why don't you trade in some of your vegetables and get one of them lambs over there in that sheepfold. There's a sin offering right there. And if you'll do right, I'll let it turn to fire. Oh boy, I've lost this audience. I want to try one last thing and I'm going to go home. Anthony, would you read for me, Brother Anthony, excuse me, would you read for me John 11 and verse 21? Then said Martha unto Jesus, Yeah? Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. You got this monkey syndrome again. Martha, Brother Stephen, blamed Jesus for her dumb brother kicking the bucket. She didn't have the decency to blame death. She blamed Jesus. If you had been here, my brother's dead because you didn't show up. If you had been here, this garbage wouldn't have happened. God's always getting a monkey deal. Yeah. Read for me. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Yeah. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Yeah. And Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. But Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Repeat. And whosoever liveth and believeth, shall never perish. Shall never believe. Shall never die. Jesus said, take you away the stone. What's this? Is that where you want to go? That's where I want to go. Oh, boy, I'll take. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he speaketh, Watch. for he hath been dead for four days. Watch this. Jesus said to her, Said I not unto thee that if thou... Stop! 
you said to me, if I'd been here, he hadn't kicked the bucket. Now I say to you, if thou believes, I can correct what's happened. If I can get you to release your faith. Would you stand with me now? Jesus said unto Martha, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. You know what he just said, Brother Cole? He just said, other people's healings, the demon-possessed boy who could not release his own faith, and other people's resurrections, Lazarus, you can affect it. You know, sometimes we always blame people we pray for for not getting healed because they say, well, you didn't believe. Wait a minute. He turned around and said, I could believe. Friend, it wasn't a demon-possessed boy that believed. His dad believed. You believe that? Last scripture. Last two scriptures. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? Hold on one second. Can't go to that Anthony. It's too long. He's a good man. I just want to tell you one last thing. I hope I haven't lost you. There's a, there's a lady, Brother Johnson, with an issue of blood. She's moving through the crowd. You know what her miracle is contingent upon? The Bible says, for she said within herself, if I can. If I can but touch the hem of his garment. I shall be made whole. Could it be the reason why she was so low? She was carrying that monkey in. Could it be the reason why we stand so tall? There ain't no monkey of responsibility on us. You ever wondered why she went for the heavenless garment and not his hands? His hands are always crowded with people getting free new things. There's plenty of room at his feet. The book of Job in 41 chapters lists 300 questions. Asked 300 questions. And when God shows up and talks to Job out of the whirlwind and says, Job, you got a question for me? Job says, no. For the presence of God gave him illumination, and he says, I know thou canst do everything. I'm the problem. And Jesus Christ tells us in Revelation 3 and verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man did not say, if any man hear the knock. No! If any man hear my voice, there's a difference. We are in a generation, we better recognize who's knocking at our door. When somebody knocks on the door, the knock is only given to get your attention. The voice is declared to identify the visitor. Could it be that the Holy Spirit of God in this whole camp is a knocking on our door and some of us haven't opened because we don't recognize the voice? Oh, 
Lord, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Sir, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. I believe you'll find me. Right now, I know it's late. Right now, I still believe this day started out with a kiss of anticipated miracles. And that there is such a power in the auditorium. If you can lift your faith and lift your hands, I'm going to pray and I'm going to command healing. And God will sweep this audience with a wind. In the name of Jesus Christ, the authority of the word of the Lord, I command healing from the throne of grace to the people in this auditorium. From the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. Supernatural, huh? divine energy of the Holy Ghost to move, to take every pain, to take every encumbrance, to cast every doubt and fear away. Be healed. Be healed. Receive your healing. Jesus said, if you believe, you will receive. Receive it now. Receive it now. Vocalize your faith. Begin to praise and thank Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Holy power, divine energy, life, every part of your body, every gift of your spirit, every hurt from childhood, everything now that is breeding darkness and despair in your spirit and your mind. I take dominion over it in the name of Jesus. I loose into your spirits, into your emotions, into your bodies, the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ makes you whole by your faith. By your faith. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. Come on, help them, my unbelief. 
unbelief. Help thou my unbelief. Oh, Jesus. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord Jesus Christ. I adore you, Lord. I do believe. I do believe. If there's areas of my life that are infractions, that are below par, help thou my unbelief. His power to heal everything in the house. Flow, Holy Ghost. Flow, Holy Ghost. Thank you. 